Derek Lassick, 1993 Sugar Bowl MVP, part of the University of Alabama. Derek, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the game in T-Town. Uh, thanks for having me. All right, Derek, what'd you do yesterday, man? Did you did you knock out the grill, or did you go get barbecue? What did, what was your plans, or what uh, were your plans? No, I, I went over I went over some friends' house and uh, partake partook in a little barbecue and uh, libation. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, but it is a weird holiday, is it not? I mean, you got the you got to work Monday and Tuesday for all of us, and then you got to wear you know you get Wednesday off, then you got to go back Thursday and Friday. It's it's just unique having a holiday sandwich right in the middle of the week. Oh yeah, but you know it breaks it up. So now you only have two more days left in the week to work. Most of us, you know, sure. about Thursday, Friday, and then you have the weekends there. So you get that two days. Yeah, no, no. We get, I guess we get a chance to recycle a little bit. Hey, Derek, uh, I know what you're up to, but a lot of the folks uh, want an update from Derek Lassick, man. Give us the latest of of what you're up to, and and, and kind of give us the Derek Lassick update. Well, you know, I, I was in the medical cell deal. Uh, Kind of doing that. Um, uh, me and my wife has purchased uh, a couple of houses to renovate and flip. So you know we're we're doing that, and you know trying to spend some as much time as I can with my little one. I got a two year old, so that takes up most of my free time. Sure. Are you still living in the Atlanta area? Yes. Okay. I, I live in the city of Smyrna, which is about fifteen minutes outside downtown Atlanta. Okay. Well, we're going to be headed over your way. Nick Saban and the crew coming over for SEC Media Days uh, coming up here in about 10 days. We're going to be taking over the city of Atlanta, and you know the conversation, and Alabama comes rolling to town. The other 13 schools will be there, but uh, when the Crimson Tide comes rolling to town, it's like Elvis Presley coming to town. Yeah, no question. Well, you know, the champ is here. Kind of like, you know, I, I remember hear, hearing that in the Muhammad Ali movie. The champ is here, and so... We're coming back as the defending champs. I know Nick Saban doesn't like to say that, but uh, 2017 Alabama was the national champ, so they're here to defend their title. All right, so let me talk about a guy living in Georgia that hangs around uh -huh. all those dogs, and and I'm just curious. So let's let's go back to halftime. Did you have any text messages from your dog fans, friends? at halftime saying it's over, and what was your response? Listen, I had a lot of phone calls. I took about three of them. The others I let go to voicemail. You can ask Rick Brown and um, Mr. Pinsell, who was at my house also watching the game. I answered the phone. I said, the game's not over. Y'all better pray we don't put the backup quarterback in the game. If we put him in, it's going to be a different story. And, and people on the phone laugh, laugh, and they yeah, 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 George is going to be the national champ. Sure enough, they put two in the game, and the rest is history. It, it, but I called it before I called it before Saban did it. Did you really? You can ask. You can ask the people. Okay. Well, I'm tell I'm telling you, I'm glad now, nobody. Knew, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't know if we would win the game, but I knew we would play a lot uh, better offensively because of his skill set. Derek, you, you have played at the highest level. You played in the NFL. You played here at the University of Alabama. Let's walk back and talk about J1 Hurts just for a couple of minutes. And I've said multiple times in this radio program, there is no way that I could have had the attitude that J1 Hurts displayed in that championship game and, and and the way that he supported his teammate, the backup quarterback. Yeah, it, it speaks to his character. Um, I don't know him personally, uh, but you can tell uh, by his body language and, and by the interviewing that I've watched him uh, partake in that uh, he's a classy kid, and uh, he's a competitor. He's going to want to play. So you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I at Alabama we say the best man plays. You know, and it, it's it's. Jalen took us to a national championship, came up a little short. He took us through a great season last year. Tua had the great game in the national championship. That They're going to battle for it during the offseason and, and may the best quarterback win. And whoever that is, you know, as fans, we just need to support them. And hopefully whoever doesn't win the backup position will stay because you never know. You know, something may happen and 
player may go down and it's the next man up. So, I'm just curious from a player perspective, what do you see in Tua Tonga Valoa? Nothing rattles him. He can make every throw. And he's more agile than people give him credit for. Um, so when you have the attitude that you can make every throw and you have the arm that you can make every throw and you have the athletes around you like Alabama has, it makes for a deadly combination. That offense is going to be so explosive next year with the backs they have coming back. Um, um, both Harris uh, boys, uh, the young guys they have on the, the outside, the one receiver, um, oh, he has a funny name. Uh, I think he's going to have a breakout year. I think he's going to be a sophomore. He's from Florida. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you see, J- Jalen Waddle is – oh, Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy. Okay, yeah, because I was trying to get Florida. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's from the same area as Amari Cooper and all those guys came from. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have a breakout season. He's going to be one of the top four or five receivers in the country. Well, you look at, I mean, the excitement here is, you know, we were talking about fireworks yesterday. I mean, can you imagine this offense? I mean, you look at Devontae Smith, who caught the championship. You go through the backs. If you want to talk about uh, David Harris is trying to do something that's never been done, and that's go three consecutive seasons, 1,000 yards. It's never been done uh, here in Tuscaloosa. And you begin to look at the weapons. I mean, this offense has a chance to be the best fireworks show we've ever seen uh, here in Tuscaloosa in some time. Uh, yes, and I think they're going to need to be uh, uh, that dynamic because we're going to have a young defense, uh, especially in the, the secondary. So I, I think we're going to have to score a few points in order to win some games. It's not going to be the 17, uh, the, the 14 or 7 games. I think our defense will give up a little uh, more points in the beginning of the season towards the middle of the season they're going to mature a little and kind of start understanding what's going on and then the tail part of the season I think the defense will be a little more dominant but in the beginning of the year I think we're going to have to uh, put up a lot of more points uh, a lot more points than, than than normal from a running back perspective can you break down Damian Harris and kind of share some insight in what you see in this young man well you know he, he's he kind of reminds me of um Sean Alexander, he doesn't look real shifty, doesn't look real quick, but he, he, he hits the hole uh, uh, tacklers fall off of him, and he seems to always make a big run every game. You know, but just looking at him, it's like, wow, really? You know, Derrick Henry, you could see um, the, the – uh, Mark Ingram's the uh, what's the other guy's name? Eddie Lacy. Uh, Eddie Lacy. Uh, Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson. Yeah, those guys you can see they, they're big. They look dynamic. They, they they're explosive and, and things of that nature. Damien, just next thing you know, he's got a hundred something yards. Like really? <laughs> but you know, I love watching him run. Let me ask you, and, and I know it was just a short amount of time, but uh, Harris number two, Najee Harris from Antioch, California, uh, he looked like him. He showed me something in that national championship game that would be another weapon in that backfield. Yeah, you know, I think with him, it's uh, learning the timing aspect of it. You know, sometimes he's ahead of his blockers and things of that nature. As he learns how to run within that offense and, and get the timing down with the offensive linemen, He's going to be something special. He's hard to bring down, very powerful, and then, and he's a lot more shiftier than I thought he would be for such a big to be such a big back. Derek, would you take a couple of minutes here, and you could tell any story that you want to share? We love Coach Stallings here. I mean, it's just he's a part of our weekly lineup. He we join him every or he joins us every Wednesday at five o'clock, and he tells stories and. I told you a couple of weeks ago, I sent you a text message. Uh, He was taking up for you. He's still taking up for you. He said he ran into the official who made the call, (laughs) and he literally, he gave him a piece of his mind. He goes, the minute I saw him, the anger came back. And anyway, he's still taking up for you, what, 25 years later. But uh, can you take a minute and just help us understand Coach Stallings from your perspective and what he means to you? Uh, Coach Stallings means the world to me. I mean, he's literally a father figure to us. 
Um, and there's some things that he has taught us that I use in, in my daily life. Like, I, I never forget, um, you know, everyone talks about championships, but no one really talked about, I guess, to, to copy off the next statement, the process. And he was the first one that really talked about the process. He says, look, we don't want to be playing our best football in the beginning of the year. We want to get better and better each week. If we get better and better each week, we have a chance to play for a national championship. And then if we get that chance, we'll be playing our best football because we'll put everything together and we can win a national championship. So I take that approach in my day-to-day life. You know, I try to get better every day. Every day I set little goals. And um, it's helped me be uh, the man I am. It's helped me achieve a lot of the goals that I set forth. And uh, it's something that always stuck and I apply it to my daily life. Yeah, you look at Coach Stalling, certainly uh, he is as sharp. And, and, you know, you go back this time last year, we were all wondering, uh, was Coach Stallings going to make it? And now we talk to him, like I said, every week, and it's it's he, he is so energized. And and I think it's just a, it gives you a little different perspective. As he said, he was uh, he was dead for a few minutes, and they defibrillated him and got him back and, and now I think it's, uh, you know, his energy is level. I've watched him speak twice since then, and, and it's just like he, he just a rejuvenated life uh, at the age of 83, 82, 83. I think I'm right. It, it is, and there's something that he's always talked about, and I know if you talk to Coach Stallings uh, weekly, you've heard this story. He's like, who am I to, to get down on myself or to, 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 to complain about anything in life? He said, I had a son that was Down syndrome, and I've never once heard him complain about anything, you know, and he's dealing with, you know, being Down syndrome. So if he can deal with that and not complain once, why should I complain about anything? We are truly blessed, you know, to have our health. And while we're here on this earth, we need to do everything we can to show God our appreciation for giving us a healthy life. Derek, I want to walk you back to that championship game for just a couple of minutes. Uh, we're talking to Derek Lassick. He was the MVP of the 1993 Sugar Bowl game. Alabama went on to defeat Miami 34-13. to Going into that game, how confident were you personally that Alabama could win that game? You know, I, I was pretty confident. I knew offensively we had to help the defense out. If we could help the defense out by um, – maintaining possession of the ball, controlling the time of possession, we had a great chance of winning the game. If we scored 10 to 14 points, I thought that would be enough. Our defense was was coming off of that rough game they had against Florida, and they wanted to prove themselves. And and what greatest stage in the national championship to prove that you're the best defense in the country. So I, I was I had all the confidence in the world and I, I gained more confidence as we were watching um footage of the pin of the uh Pitt Miami game and I saw the success that they had Pittsburgh uh against Miami running the ball and I said I, I think our offensive line and our backs are better than theirs. So if we play up to our ability and capability, we can have just as much success as, as they had. And um and our offensive line played a heck of a game. Yeah, it's it's fun to go back and watch. And Derek, I'll tell you a little quick uh, inside story. Only in Tuscaloosa could we do a day where we talk about favorite championships, right? I mean, there's a lot of them to choose from here in Tuscaloosa. And even <laughs> with Nick Saban accomplishing what he's been able to accomplish, it was not a unanimous, but it was at least a consensus for those old enough to remember it. Ninety-two, the championship season was still one of the favorites that people mentioned. Something about that team, post-Coach Bryant, you guys showed us that we could still win championships at a high level and just brought so much enjoyment back to the fan base. That 1992 team was just special and and awesome to kind of go back and even think through as we go back to those moments. Yeah, uh, you know, the expectation was a lot different. We hadn't won a championship in, since 79. I don't know what we were ranked preseason. Um, but, you know, we just kept getting better and kept rising in the polls, and it was kind of unexpected to the fan base. Now, Coach Saban, the difference is he gets all these five-star recruits. He's a great coach. The expectation is 
win a national championship or it's a failure. Well, we didn't have as much expectation from our fan base. You know, they wanted us to win the SEC, and, you know, we may have an opportunity to play for the national championship. And um, just so happened the first year of the SEC championship, we were in it, and we won it. So, you know, there's only one first. So we wanted to make sure we were in that first SEC championship game. And uh, once we got there, we knew we could take care of our business. And the first team to go 13-0. So we look at the University of Alabama. All right, yeah. Derek, uh, final question. I'd love for us to be the first one to ever go 15-0, and too. I mean, you know, since we did it, I think 2009 was also a record setting. And now we've added the extra game. So I guess they just go ahead and do it this year. Knock it out of the way. Let's go 15-0. and And the schedule sort of sets up favorable for us. Uh, don't tell Nick Say, but he'd call that rat poison but uh it does it does set up kind of favorably uh to us uh but uh, well, you, you say favorably but whenever you're the, the the king of the hill everybody's giving you their best shot you know when you're, you're in the middle of the pack you know king's okay boom but everyone wants to be the team that knocks you off that mountain so you know i think it's harder when you're a defending champion champion to to, to maintain that level of play each and every week, knowing that you're going to get every team's best shot. That's why it's hard for teams to repeat and do it and be undefeated. Derek, I'm, I'm curious. Um, there was an article that came out out in San Francisco, the Chronicle, and it was about Najee Harris. A as you know, this kid was all world coming in and you kind of, when you go to Alabama, there's guys that are also all world that are your teammates. Um, and you kind of have to wait your turn. And he kind of went into the challenges mentally, not physically, that he was going through, kind of having to set back and, and let other guys get the carries. Uh, you were also a high school All-American. You came in with expectations. But there was talent here on that roster. How difficult was that when you come out of high school knowing that you are the man, you are the guy, and when you come to a place like Alabama, they've also got a lot of other players, and you kind of have to wait your turn. You know, my expectation was I was 180 pounds, 185 pounds coming out of high school. I knew I probably was going to be red-shirted, so I understood that going into it. I just want to, you know, really work in the, to get myself acclimated to being in the, the, South, the Southeastern Conference and, and amongst a lot of other great athletes. So, and learn as much as I could from the older guys. I knew Bobby Humphrey was going to be there, uh, uh, Murray Hill. So I knew that there were guys ahead of me that, you know, Nowadays, it's a little different because these guys are coming in. Uh, they're built like the guys that are already there because they have these incredible training facilities and, and, and things of that nature. So they're coming in physically ready to play, whereas I didn't come in physically ready to play. Now, the mental part of it is like a lot of – like Coach Saban says all the time, these kids are being fed, oh, I'm a five-star, I'm a five-star. So, you know, mentally they're expecting, well, I'm a five-star, I'm supposed to start. I'm supposed to play. And when it doesn't happen, it kind of, you know, messes with them. Well, I'm supposed to be playing. I'm a five-star. They don't understand, some of them, that that's something you have to earn, playing time. You know, and Najee's got some playing time. And if he knows, like I know, he wants to have a, a career in the NFL. Well, as a running back, most running backs start to deteriorate in the NFL at the age of 30. That's because they've had so many carries during that time span, that their body just can't take it. So the least amount of carries you can have before you make it to the league, the better you're, you are when you're in the league, and, and it may give you a longer period of time to play as a professional athlete making money. So mentally I'm thinking, okay, I'm keeping the, the carries down, but I'm still in the scout's eyes. The first, second-round draft pick, give me the ball as much as they want, because I'm getting paid for it. Awesome answer. Derek, thank you again <laughs> for helping us talk some Alabama Crimson Tide football and preserving the University of Alabama history. We love to do it here on the program, and I greatly appreciate the insight that you're able to provide. Uh, hopefully we can connect in this wonderful ride that maybe we're going to try to go back-to-back, -back and uh, maybe we can connect up uh, during the season. I appreciate you for spending a few minutes with us here in Tuscaloosa. Thanks for having me, and if you please could tell Coach Dolan, I love him. Next time you talk. Hey, we do too. We do too, man. And we have callers that say it all the time. I mean, listen, because he's – I was born in 78. Uh, Derek, he is my Coach Bryant. I mean, a lot of people talk about Coach Bryant yeah. here. I don't remember Coach Bryant yeah. the way that I do Coach Stallings, but uh, it's just an absolute honor to be able to talk with with Coach Stallings each and every week. 
Thank you, Derek. I hope you have a great afternoon, sir. You too. Thanks for having me.